Now, if you look up the definition of hope in the dictionary, uh, it says a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And hope is certainly what most Ravens fans, uh, really, if not all, had for both Juwan James uh, and Kyle Fuller when both of them went down to injury uh, against the Jets on Sunday in the game. Um, but expectation was that they were going to be out for a while. Uh, really, expectation was that they were going to be out for the entire season, uh, especially once that card came out. And then in yesterday's presser, John Harbaugh, he confirmed it uh, for the both of them. So Jawan James out for the year, Achilles. And I think uh, Kyle Fuller was also an Achilles. And they, they called Kyle Fuller's really a, a freak type of accident. Um, and that's unfortunate. It, it's unfortunate because... With Juwan James, uh, he had had a prior injury history, um, and this was his first time playing football in like two and a half, three years. He hadn't played since 2019, and he was finally getting back into it, and he was doing all right too, and now it's over. That's a wrap. His season is done uh, before it even really, really got started. And with Kyle Fuller, um, he, especially being from Baltimore, that he was going to be a try to help be a hometown hero and whatnot. And just really, uh, he was asked, he had a big task in front of him from jump because uh, he was expected to be that primary slot corner and whatnot. It could help on the outside a bit too. Um, but when Marcus Peters, when they decided he wasn't going to play in that first game, he was like, all right, Kyle Fuller, you up. You like really up now. And he took on the task and he had some ups and downs, but still uh, he was part of helping the Ravens to win. And he was part of that defense that, for the longest, held the Jets to uh, three points. And then finally, at the very end, they ended up giving up that touchdown. But it sucks. It's, 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 it, those are big blows for the Ravens because they, um, they are guys that were expected to be depth guys. But they got thrust into the starting lineup because of injuries to the people that were ahead of them. And they did all right. But now they're both done. They're both done for the year. So how do the Ravens counter that? Now... I think that for both injuries, while both injuries are, are, are super, super tough and, and very unfortunate, and you just hope that for the players, it, it's just football is just as much mental as it is physical. So, yeah, you, of course, hope that their bodies respond and whatnot and their bodies can recover properly, but more so even their minds because the, you, as a football player, you look forward to the season. I mean, they, they signed Kyle Fuller, and of course, I'm sure he was excited. All right, I got signed by the Baltimore Ravens, and this has been a team that's, they've been close. Maybe I could help them get over the hump. And now that's over. Now that's it. So you hope that their mental state ends up being all right, and they can really recover that way just as much as they do uh, physically. But the Ravens, uh, I think the Ravens have put themselves in a good position to be able to absorb these blows uh, this off, or this offseason um, from the way that they've built the roster, um, especially with the offensive line uh, and with the uh, the secondary, starting with the offensive line, um, like we talked about with both players, they weren't expected to be the primary starters. Uh, but with uh, Juwan James, he was just a fill in for Ronnie Stanley until Ronnie Stanley came back. And with Juwan James, I was honestly surprised when the Ravens didn't cut him this offseason but I was happy because I'm like hey with Ronnie Stanley we can't put all our eggs in the Ronnie Stanley basket even though all our money's there we can't put our eggs in that basket um because Ronnie Stanley he's had an injury history throughout his career um and then of course with the whole when TJ Watt landed on his ankle that just oof, that just made stuff a whole lot worse for Ronnie Stanley um but I was thinking, like, I thought that for some maybe a little bit of salary cap relief that they would cut Juwan James' offseason. But they didn't. They kept him. And I was glad about that. Um, and because, again, Ronnie Stanley, he wasn't ready for the start of the season. When he'll come back, we'll see. We know that John Harbaugh did talk about um, that he wanted to see Ronnie Stanley practice for, like, maybe two, three weeks before he actually got into a game. So he was practicing last week leading up to this Jets game. Um, so maybe uh, he'll return maybe against the, the Bills or the Patriots, the Dolphins, who, who, maybe, maybe, maybe John Harbaugh, give him the green light if he looks good enough. We'll see. 
But now with this injury to Jawan James, uh, that, in my opinion, it does put a little more pressure on Ronnie Stanley to come back. Um, now they do have Patrick McCary. And Patrick McCary is somebody, he is like an upgraded version of James Hurst. And you remember with James Hurst, he was that fill-in, play all these different positions on the offensive line, well, except center. But um, that's Patrick McCary. But he's a better version uh, of a James Hurst. And he literally plays every position on the offensive line. You need them to play center? Okay, cool. You need them to play guard? All right, fine. You need them to play tackle? All right, I'll do it. So he, he can play all across the board. So that's a good thing for the Ravens. And it's, it's different with him because he's, he's one of those people where it's not just a fill-in and it's like, all right, go do what you can do. He actually provides quality. He's a quality fill-in. Because there's some guys that you could put on the offensive line uh, on a team and it's just like, all right, let's just hope that we can get by. But with him, he actually brings you quality to whatever position. So with him, I, I would expect moving forward, until Ronnie Stanley comes back, I would expect moving forward that it's going to be Patrick McCary uh, that ends up taking those reps. Now, will the Ravens add somebody? They could. They could. I got to take a look at what their practice squad is looking like because they could always do a call up. Um, they could sign a free agent. And if they were to sign a free agent, just know that it wouldn't be anybody like the, this high profile play at the tackle position I, I wouldn't expect that at all especially because they're waiting on Ronnie Stanley to come back and they already have their high profile player at the left tackle position so it's just a matter of time so um with Kyle Fuller with his role uh Marcus Peters he should be back any day now Maybe he'll come back for this Dolphins game. That would be great, especially with Tyreek Hill and Jason Waddle. Uh, we'll see. But whenever he comes back, uh, that'll be nice for the Ravens secondary. Um, but with, with him returning uh, for that slot role, who, who's going to hold it down? Uh, the expectation would be Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens would be the prime candidate to hold it down uh, from the slot. Now, we know what Brandon Stevens is crazy because in, in, in preseason, he was struggling some. It was like, whoa, hold up. Whoa, what's, what's going on with Brandon Stevens? But then in the game uh, on Sunday, he did pretty good. Yeah, he did give up that touchdown at the very end. But like, like I told y'all during that game, I'm whatever about that. The game was over, and the, it felt like the Ravens' defense had been defending the red zone and defending the goal line for like 30 minutes straight because they were there for a while. That, that drive felt like it was forever to me. Um, so I, I expected the Ravens to give up a touchdown. So as every down that pass and the, every down that pass and they didn't, I was like, okay, wow, that's nice for the defense. But I was just waiting on that that one breakthrough and the, and the Jets finally got it. Um, but Brandon Stevens, he played a pretty good game uh, overall uh, on Sunday against the Jets. And with him having that experience, um, that starting experience already, he had a lot of experience last year. Uh, going from safety to corner to corner to safety. Now this year, he's been going from corner to corner, outside corner, inside corner. I um, I just hope that there can be some consistency for him at whatever position he's going to be playing. Not to say that, oh, he can't do both, but it's always better when you can master one instead of having to do this, that, and a third, because we've seen it in the past, especially with Ravens players specifically. To where the Ravens will have them doing this, then they have them doing that, then they have them doing this and that. And then they'll wonder like, oh man, why, why did this player not develop properly? Why did this player struggle? Oh, well, you kept switching positions back forth, back forth. And I know everything depends on the need. Because injuries, they create need at certain positions. So you got to do some shuffling. So I get that. But still, that's something that you got to pay attention to. Is development over the long run. But Brandon Stevens, he'll definitely be a candidate. Also, um... Pepe Williams, Jalen Amore Davis, they drafted not one but two corners uh, this offseason. So the Ravens really made sure, like, hey, we know uh, how it gets in our secondary every single year. Our depth gets tested every single year. So, you know what, let's try to counter that before, ahead of time. So just in case it does get tested again in 2022, which now it has, we'll be ready. Because their offseason slogan Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. This is it right here. This is it. This is it. And I know Jeff Zrebic, he also mentioned um, 
Or Darius Washington as a possible option uh, to be in the slot. Uh, but I think they will go with the guys uh, that are on the roster already before him. Um, so, yeah, Brandon Stevens looking to have an increased role, and even though he already has a big role as is, but his role is going to increase uh, even more. And even when Marcus Peters does finally come back. Now, if Marcus Peters doesn't come back against the, the Dolphins, then Brandon Williams is going to have a huge role. I mean, he'll have a huge role regardless, but I would probably expect him to be outside corner. Now, somebody that a lot of Ravens fans have been bringing up, they're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, he didn't retire yet. Ravens are very familiar with him, obviously, because he's been a Raven his entire career. And that's Jimmy Smith. There have been some Ravens fans saying, oh, the Ravens should give Jimmy Smith a call. And they could. That is an option. But, yeah, he technically didn't retire yet. But is Jimmy Smith even trying to play football? Is he in football shape? These are, these are questions that I don't know the answer to. I'm just wondering. Because we literally, ever since the end of last year, we have literally not heard a thing on Jimmy Smith as far as football. But he is technically an option. But then there's some free agents out there. I know some people mention the Joe Hayden. How's he been looking? How's he doing? Um, so that's another option. Uh, there's another guy. Oof, he was a slot corner. He played a lot of slot corner for the Broncos a couple years back. And he was one of the better slot corners. But right now, I, I cannot remember his name for nothing. It's, it's not coming to me. I remember what, oh, Chris Harris. Chris Harris Jr. There he goes. A lot of people thinking about him. He's a possible option. And, and there's some other cornerbacks out there too. But with this, I feel like Ravens have a little more flexibility. Uh, when it comes to the secondary than they do uh, at the left tackle. So we'll see how they address it. But it is good that, again, with the draft, them drafting not one but two corners uh, and the way that they just tried to really ramp up this secondary, they did a pretty good job of, of, of staying ready so they wouldn't have to get ready. And then with the left tackle situation, they tried to stay ready as best they could. Um, it could have done a little bit better. Uh, but they do have some guys, again, they had the brought in Jawan James, still kept Patrick McCarry, so they did have some options at the left tackle position uh, just in case Ronnie wasn't ready, which he hasn't been ready yet. So hopefully soon he ends up being ready, um, and hopefully he is a full go and he can return to form. But again, just another reminder, for when Ronnie Stanley does come back, um, you're going to have to bear with him because he hasn't played football in like a year and a half. So it's going to be a process. Should we just expect Ronnie Stanley to come out there and just be dominant from jump at left tackle? No, I wouldn't expect it. I don't think that would be fair to expect it. He hasn't played football in forever. Like, and that, that's a long time. That's a really long time. You can have the smarts. You can have the experience. You can have the knowledge of the game. You can have all of that stuff. But if you haven't actually been out there, then it's just, it's just much different. And like they always talk about, game ain't nothing like game speed. It's nothing like it. Because you can look at however many iPads you want to. You can look at practice. You can know the playbook. You can know this, that, and the third. But unless you're actually out there, then it just don't hit the same. So anyway, we'll see how Ravens do when it comes to replacing these guys. See if they make any outside moves or any interior moves, of course. Love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. And unfortunately... Like Jawan James and Kyle Fuller are when it comes to the season, I'm out.